Hey guys, roll out here with Lego Transformers Plume Edge. For a while, I've thought that fair game is a little out of place in the Sky Terra trio. You have a Tyrannosaurus and an ancient whale and a pheasant, which is a little underwhelming. I started calling him a prehistoric bird, which is fine, but his name is still Fair Game, and I couldn't simply rename him, it wouldn't catch on. So unfortunately, Fair Game needed to die. But like how Megatron becomes Galvatron and Bumblebee becomes Goldbug, Fair Game becomes Plumedge. Which, as a name, I think fits a little bit better. Undex and Kaizor are portmanteaus, and Plumedge is a combination of plumage and edge. Like, the edge of a blade. He's back in black, baby! He's edgy now! He's also a peacock this time, which I think is a more regal and dignified bird. It also has symbolism in some cultures. It represents things like rebirth and spiritual awakening and immortality, which is fairly appropriate, all things considered. Now, structurally, he is pretty much just a recolor and retool of fair game. He does have some extra little bits on the tail and the head. Unfortunately, he also carries over some of fair game's limitations. Even though he is a peacock, uh, his tail can't open up, which is, you know, the most defining feature of a peacock. But don't worry, that comes later. For articulation, he does have the legs can move forward and back, the neck can go up and down, and the head can rotate. You can also reposition the wings just a little bit. For comparison, here he is with a bird watcher. Here he is with quick stop. And of course, here he is with the other two components of Sky Terra King, which have both gotten slightly less dramatic upgrades. Undex has a few small changes, which we will explore once we get to the combination. And then obviously, Kaizor has some new armor, which I will explain once we get to robot mode. To transform him, first we're going to disconnect the tail and bring down the neck. Next, we'll open up the wings and rotate what will be the robot's waist. The legs will swing around, and then we can work on the feet. So first, the beak will rotate, then we can bring the foot forward and rotate the crown onto his heel. For this foot, First, we're going to rotate the clip, then bring the foot forward, and then, once again, rotate that onto his heel. Now we're going to take this back assembly and swing that down. That will allow clearance, so we can bring up the head and swing that around. Next, we're going to rotate this entire assembly and bring it up onto the back. This little back piece here will rotate so it's vertical. Now we can bring down the neck and reveal the face. Finally, we're going to bring the arms forward and then start to open up the arms in a series of hinges before swinging them down into position. And there you have Plume Edge in robot mode. Compared to his previous self, I think a simple color swap gives him a much different feel overall. But I find that very difficult to explain in words, so here they are side by side. As you can see, almost all of his color is relegated to the lower body. His upper body is almost entirely black. Now there is a very intentional reason for that, which will become more apparent a little bit later. 
For articulation, the head can rotate, the waist can rotate, the legs can move forward and back, but they are limited by that very waist rotation. They can go in and out, the feet can rotate. Technically, the arms can go forward and back, but they are attached a little bit further back than I would like them to be, so it looks a little bit awkward. The arms can sort of go in and out and bend at the elbow, but this model has always been limited by its own design. Now, you might have been able to spot a couple of extra hinges, which don't play a role in his main transformation from bird to robot whatsoever. That is actually an upgrade I've made to Sky Terra King over the years, which, once again, you'll see in just a moment. For size comparison, here he is with a minifigure. With Quick Stop. And here is the trio together again in robot mode. Long story short, the group finds a Cybertronian relic sought after by the Decepticons, and Fair Game is killed as they try to escape with it. Before long, the enemy catches up with them, and Kaizor harnesses the relic in a last-ditch effort to defeat them. Sharing its energies with his allies so that its power won't destroy him, Fair Game is reborn as Plume Edge. Kaizor gets some fancy new armor, and the team is unified stronger than ever. Undex and Plume Edge now have a closer resembling color scheme, and Kaizor now shares tan accents with Plume Edge as well. Honestly, it's supposed to be gold, but they don't make all these pieces in the right color, so I went with... Something close enough. Anyway, I put together this little cinematic video dramatizing their transformation, and you can find a link to that down in the description. Finally, let's prep the team for combination, starting with Kaizor, who is easiest to get to torso mode from his robot mode. You can see that these days I like to tilt the piece on top of his head to give his face more definition. So, we're going to rotate that back into place so it's flush with the rest of his head. Next, we're going to swing the arms back and then flip the whole thing around. The chest will open up, the dinosaur head will flip around, and then collapse back into the body. Finally, the legs will, of course, become the horns of Sky Terra King. You can rotate the head around if you'd like to pretend that Sky Terra's face is hidden in Kaizor's robot mode, but all these years later, I still haven't found a good way to give Sky Terra King a proper face. The geometry in Kaizor's transformation is just too precise to do anything differently. I've actually tried representing his face with a sticker, but the pieces are too close together and it would end up getting peeled off. The only solution I can think of is actually printing a decoration onto this piece, and I don't know how I feel about that. You can see I've built some additional hinges into Undex's whale mode so that it's a bit more symmetrical. The eyes now have more depth to them, and I've made some changes to the tail as well. But it's actually easier to get him into combined mode from robot mode, which now has a rounded piece on his chest forming a whale eye, which I think is kind of a cool motif. Also, the weapon can disconnect from his back a whole lot easier. But we're going to split him in half and work on this side first. The chest will close up. One half becomes the arm. And the other half becomes the shoulder. Except this time, one of those additional hinges will open up to become the lower arm or his hand. Either way, it makes the arm a little bit longer in combined mode and gives Sky Terra better proportions. The other side is pretty much exactly the same, only inverted. One half becomes the arm, and the other half becomes the shoulder. And then we can open up the lower half. And there you go. Now as for the weapon, you can store it on his shoulder like before, you can give it to him as a weapon, but in this version there's actually a cooler way to integrate this involving Plume Edge, which we'll see in just a moment. Moving on to the legs. 
First, we're going to extend the arms and get those out of the way. Then we're going to swing down the heels and rotate the feet. The little slopes at the end will rotate as well. Next, we're going to swing forward the legs and rotate the waist before folding up the bird feet. The legs will then swing up and rotate back into place. The head will rotate and then come forward and then we can bring down the waist of Sky Terra King. The legs will come down. We can bend them at a couple of places to give it a more bestial look. And finally, we will open up the feet. So this piece right here is actually a one by four with two studs rather than four studs. And what that allows is this bottom section here to open up and swing forward. That opens up the hinge in the back, giving Sky Terra a heel. This creates kind of a bird-like claw, which gives him some much needed support in combined mode. We'll do the same thing over here. And there you have the legs ready to go. Now, merging them together, Kaizor plugs into Plume Edge, and Undex forms the arms. Then, we can work on the wing pack. So this time around, Undex's missile launcher is going to plug into the head of Plume Edge, and the whole thing will collapse into the back so that the missiles sit across his shoulders. Finally, we're going to take this beam effect part and it will span the wings, creating kind of a peacock feather shape. And there is what I like to call Awakened Sky Terra King. I think it's always been implied that Kaizor really dominates this combination. Instead of being a fusion of three minds, it's really more like super mode Kaizor, and I think that here, it's clearer than ever. He really is the unifying centerpiece, and Plume Edge and Undex basically just create support armor for him. You can see that I've isolated most of the bright colors onto his back so that your eye is drawn towards his peacock tail here. It makes it seem even more colorful than it is. Originally, I was going to build rainbow colors throughout it, but I thought that looked a little bit tacky, and so I went with this more simple approach, which I think is kind of a cool and unique design. I imagine instead of being more of a traditional jetpack like it was before, this sort of radiates and pulses this mystical light energy that allows him to fly. I've also separated the colors because I've intended for this to come off as a weapon. It's kind of like a, a beam fan blade sort of thing. It almost has a swinging pendulum shape and he can hold on to that just as easily as he did the missile launcher in the past. Of course, he is dynamic as ever. He has plenty of articulation. The head can rotate. It can kind of tilt up and down. He's got some movement in the torso if you get his backpack out of the way. The arms can go in and out, forward and back. They can rotate and even bend at the elbow. The legs can go forward and back, in and out. They can bend at a couple of different places. And now he has feet which can support all of these cool action poses as well. I think he's fairly expressive, considering the fact that, uh, yeah, he still doesn't have a real face. All right, let's do this one last time. Here he is with a minifigure. And here he is with Quick Stop.
If I'm being honest, I do think Sky Terra King is a bit dated in terms of visual complexity. And in some ways, this video almost represents a failure to truly modernize the build in the same way that I recently overhauled Devastator. What I'm saying is, I wouldn't necessarily call this a proper version 2. But these are still undoubtedly fan favorites, and there will always be a charming sense of style to them. At the very least, I wanted to set something right about the trio that has always kind of bothered me. But who am I kidding? Y'all are probably still gonna call him fair game anyway. Until next time, this has been Rollout, signing off.